Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your listening ear on this supernatural Sunday. I say this quite religiously and repetitiously that you should add super to your natural. My brothers and sisters, let me tell you that God is still in the miracle working business. The sky is the limit to what we can have. Just believe and receive it and watch God perform it today. Uh, well, our weather has been changing, and I don't know about you, I really appreciate uh, the summer, the spring that's coming, but also let me tell you there's a purpose for all four seasons. I would often tell my neighbors that white stuff make green stuff when it snow. And so, my brothers and sisters, I want you to know that God has created four seasons and we ought to give him thanks and praise for all four seasons spring and summer is coming up my brothers and sisters let me tell you freely you receive freely you give it's offering time let me tell you that giving ought to be in our living and living ought to be in our giving. God is the great giver. He gave his only begotten son. My brothers and sisters, as the Lord has prospered you and flourished you, you ought to be generous. You ought not to be selfish. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, that when you sow a seed, you must have great expectation of an enormous huge harvest that is coming your way. A cow give milk, the sun gives heat. And so brothers and sisters, let me tell you, it is important because we are stewards of what God has let us borrow and we ought to give too. God will allow money to come to us to get through us. So please give your tithe and your offering, though we are not inside of the local assembly. God said, I'll open up the windows of heaven. Listen, I hear windows opening up above your head. And he said, I'll pull you out blessing that you won't even have room enough to receive. And so I don't know about you, my brothers and sisters, you ought to lift that curse off of your life. And let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, don't steal because God know how to get his. And don't let God have to force you. Don't be a sponge giver. Well, you got to squeeze it out of you. Be willing to give, my brothers and sisters, and God will give to you. Press down, shaking together, running over. God bless you. My brothers and sisters, there is a word from the Lord. But prior to bringing you this word, we're going to go into praise and worship. I want to talk about this morning that God has already worked it out. In other words, brothers and sisters, while we are trying to figure it out, while we are trying to discover and determine what to do in a critical circumstance, and a perplexing predicament in our life, God has already worked it out. In other words, that means having, watch this, favorable outcome. Peep this out. This is for my young people and for those who are seasoned saints, less strain on the brain of trying to figure things out, especially when times are tough and rough, let me tell you, while you're sitting up there sweating, God have already <laughs> worked it out for you. It's a done deal. Don't worry about your enemies. God's going to take care of them without you even lifting a finger. Now, prior to hearing this message, God has already worked it out. Let's go into our praise and our Worship service. This song goes like this. I find space for what I treasure. And I make time for what I want. I 
opportunity to make room. Come on, sing that. I find space. I find space for what I treasure. I make time for what I want. I choose my priorities. I choose my priorities. Jesus, your my number one. Oh, yes, Jesus, you're my number one. So I will, come on, let's go. make room, I'll make room. I will, I'll prepare for two. So to invite your attention to the Old Testament collection of writings, one of the major prophets of Holy Writ, the book of Isaiah, chapter 37, verses 6, 7 
33 to 36, beginning with verse 6, the book of Isaiah, chapter 37. And it reads thus, verse 6, And Isaiah said unto them, Thus shall ye say unto your master, Thus saith the Lord, Be not afraid of the words that thou hast heard, wherewith the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Verse 7, Behold, I will send a blast upon him, and he shall hear a rumor and return to his own land, and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. Verse 33, therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with shields, nor cast a bank against it. In other words, a fortification or a pile of dirt to hide behind. Verse 34, by the way that he came, by the same shall he return, and shall not come into this city, saith the Lord. For I will defend this city to save it for mine own sake and for my servant David's sake. Lastly and finally, verse 36, Then the angel of the Lord went forth, and smote in the camp, in other words, hit, of the Assyrians, a hundred and four score and five thousand. Listen this morning, one hundred and eighty-five thousand. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpse. I want to tag the text and talk about God has already worked it out. Come on, repeat after me. God has already worked it out. The phrase, while we are trying to figure it out, in other words, to discover, to determine what to do in the midst of misfortune, critical circumstances and perplexing predicaments. Know this morning, God has already worked it out, suggesting to have a favorable outcome, especially of situations in which an unfavorable outcome is expected. Why worry, brothers and sisters? Why whine or weep? When God has already worked it out, don't let despair, depression, and disappointment have dominion over you because it's a done deal. God has already worked it out. And when you know that God has already worked it out, that's less stress and strain on your brain. God had already worked it out for King Hezekiah in Isaiah chapter 37. First of all, notice the problem. Repeat after me, the problem. Listen to what it says in verse 3. Thus saith Hezekiah. This day is a day of trouble and of rebuke, perhaps punishment, he thought about, and of blasphemy. In other words, slander. For the children are come to the birth, and there is not strength to bring forth. Hezekiah, brothers and sisters, had reached the point of weakness. He was not able through his own physical anatomy to face 
the problem that was before him. It's just like a woman who do not have enough strength to give birth. She's weak. And so here, figuratively speaking, this is what Hezekiah is saying. I, I'm just too weak uh, to face what I am confronted with. Have you ever been like that? Brothers and sisters, let me tell you, you, you have been so overwhelmed and overshadowed by your problems that you couldn't even speak. It was hard for you to sleep. No doubt he thought about maybe God is punishing the nation. Perhaps brothers and sisters, God is chastising the nation. Here Hezekiah was trying to figure it out. The record says that he rent his clothes and put on sackcloth, which is a rough cloth. It is a symbol of mourning and repentance. It's a symbol of sorrow. You see what Hezekiah did as a leader. He didn't point the finger at anybody. He, he performed self-inventory, self-examination. He, he, he was the man in the mirror. He didn't look at the faults and failures, sins and shortcomings of others. He looked within himself and he came to God in humility. The city of Judah is surrounded by the Assyrians. Just when things are going well in the city, Hezekiah looks up this morning and sees trouble, calamity, and danger all around him. You see, prior to this invasion, the city of Judah had undergone a religious revival under the leadership of King Hezekiah. They had torn down all their idols. They had torn down all their altars dedicated to false gods. They had cleansed the holy temple. The whole city this morning had turned back to the worship of the one true and living God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Consequently, this morning, God was blessing them with such prosperity and unity as had not been since the days of David the king. Just when things were going so well, here comes the enemy. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, Life can be calm one moment and chaotic the next. You and I can be up one moment and down the next. One moment we can be experiencing euphoria and then encounter low ebbs. You can have a mountaintop experience with God singing Praising, clapping your hands, hearing his word, and enjoying his presence. But right after, we we'll have a confrontation with the devil in the valley of life. None of us are exempt from problems. Private, personal. Public, let me include and inject people problems. Let me say that again. This come with rewind. As long as you live upon this earth, you are going to have people problems. Car won't start. Flat tire. Or the car need repairs. Leaking roof. Plumbing troubles, electrical problems, bill collectors calling, the aches and pains of old age, back 
and forth to the doctor in and out of the hospital. Laid off your job now on furlough, financial woes, going through a divorce or a separation, just broke up with your boyfriend or your girlfriend, son in jail, daughter pregnant, family member friend, got a phone call, just died, car accident, house Fire, theft, foreclosure, repossession. And this morning, boop, boop, the beat goes on. Not only did the Assyrians have Hezekiah and his people surrounded, but the Assyrians also began, listen to them, to taunt, to insult to ridicule, and to jeer them. And then the Assyrians, along with Sennacherib, even had the audacity, they were daring, to mock and insult God. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, when people insult you, when people persecute you, one people ridicule you, you don't, you know, they're ridiculing God. They're talking about God. What have you done unto the least one of these? You've done also unto me. Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, sent a message to the people of Judah, saying, in effect, on what do you base? Your confidence, Hezekiah, I know that one of your allies is Egypt, but Egypt is broken and anyone depending upon Egypt will be disappointed and defeated. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, do not depend upon Egypt because Egypt represents the world. The world, brothers and sisters, will chew you up and spit you out. Do not rely and depend upon Egypt, but rely and depend upon the eternal. And don't tell me, listen to him, Sennacherib, that you are mm, depending upon God. I have conquered the kings of Amath, of Arphad, and the king of the city of Sephar Valium, Hena, and Hava. Each one of them said that they were depending upon their gods. But where are their gods now? I am a conqueror. Listen to him, brothers and sisters, as he boast and brag about how he has defeated the kings and the nations, not even recognizing that sometime God will employ even the enemy to accomplish his purpose. And so here he is boasting and bragging and don't even recognize that God can loosen, watch this, the straps, and that God can draw the straps back as he please. This whole boasting and bragging king did not recognize that God is sovereign and supreme over all kings, all nations, all people. He didn't recognize that the heart of the king is in his hand and God can turn it any way he want to. Our adversary, brothers and sisters, 
will try to destroy our faith. That's what this enemy tried to do. Sennacherib, he tried to discourage Hezekiah. He tried to destroy Hezekiah's faith in God. And that's what our adversary would try to do. He would try to destroy our faith with doubts and fears by bringing up our past failures and sins and causing us to focus on our present situation. Listen, the evil one, the devil will try to convince us down here on this planet that we do not have a chance to win the battle and that we might as well give up and throw in the towel. But just because others were defeated, listen, saints, overcome and conquered by the Sennacheribs and Assyrians of life, do not mean that you will be conquered, that you will be defeated, that you will be overcome because you can become an overcomer and not overcome. Listen to what Isaiah, the 54th chapter, same book, 17 verse says, no weapon, and I need somebody to holler that out. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. You ought to be jumping up in your living room. You ought to be jumping up in your bedroom. You ought to be jumping up in your den. It will form but not succeed. Roman 8, 31 says, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? First of all, notice the problem. Then secondly, notice the prayer. We can take a lesson from Hezekiah this morning. After Hezekiah heard from his enemies, representative, he went into the house of the Lord. We cannot at, at times help the entrance of evil, but this morning we can help the entertainment of it. Just because the devil put a thought in your mind that you're never going to get out of this. You're never going to get well. It's never going to get any better. You as a believer should not entertain it. Have you heard that you cannot prevent a bird from flying over your head, but you can keep him from nesting in it. Just because the thoughts come in your mind to mean, doesn't mean that you have to keep them there. The prayers of the righteous avail if much. I remember an old school church that they used to sing a lady by the name of Mary Robinson. And I remember it so well. She used to sing just a little talk with Jesus. You ain't got to say much, but just a little talk with Jesus will make everything all right. Jesus said that if you ask anything in my name, it shall be given. If two are touching and agreeing, whatever we ask of the Father, it shall be done. It says in verse 14, Hezekiah went up, not down, unto the house of the Lord. Now, I know many of our churches, the local facilities are closed, but isn't it a blessing, my brothers and sisters, that you can go into your own secret closet, close this whole world out, and talk to God. Listen to what he says in verse 14. You got to get your Bibles. 
or take your phone and look at it. Some of you have uh, the scripture on your phone. But listen, he says, and spread, spread, spread it before the Lord. That's what you should do this morning. Spread your bills. Spread your hurts. Spread your problems, your worries, your anxieties, your cares. Because the Bible says, cast all your cares on the Lord, for he cares for you. Frustrations and your troubles before the Lord. You know, my brothers and sisters, let me tell you that our president, President Biden, with all the political training and Kamala Harris, should come together jointly and spread the conditions of our economy. Talk to me. Our health issues, our employment concerns, they should get together and spread it before the Lord. Even Governor Whitmer, or oh, they tried to kill her, they tried to take her life, but God protected her. She should get with her cabinet members and for the state of Michigan need to spread it before the Lord. Oh, Pastor Jay's thanking God for the vaccine. But let me tell you something, brothers and sisters, the vaccine is not the cure all. It will help many, particularly the elderly. But we cannot keep God out of the equation. Even Mayor Duggan, I hope somebody's listening, for the state of the city of Detroit. You need to spread it before the Lord. Listen, brothers and sisters, he didn't complain about it. He just spread the letters, content, and concern of it before God. Hebrews 4, let me hurry. Verses 15 and 16 says, We have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the filling of our infirmities, our weaknesses, our struggles, our pain, but was in all points tempted, tested like as we are, yet without sin. Listen to this portion of this passage. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. Anybody listening to me this morning need some mercy? I don't know about you. I need mercy. Mercy suit my case and pity my every groan. He said and find grace. Watch this favor to help in time. Of need. It just so happens that God's representative at this time was Isaiah the prophet. And let me tell you in this day and time, it's not all about being politic, politically correct. It's all about being prophetically clear. You know, my recent I talked about that. Let me tell you, in this day and time, we need prophets. Prophets, preacher prophets, pastor prophets, who's able to be seers, who's able to hear from God and bring to the people of God and this world a prophetic message from on high. Isaiah sent a message back to the king saying, thus says the Lord, do not be afraid of your enemy, your enemy is going to fall. 
You can read it in verses 6 and 7. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, we need to understand that we will be confronted by enemies. This should be an encouragement to all of us that God will cause, good God Almighty, our enemies to fall. Don't try to get them back. Look at somebody and tell them they're going to fall. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. Let me tell you, the king and the horses couldn't put him back together again. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, he that made heaven and earth. You ought to listen to Hezekiah's prayer. I don't have enough time. You ought to read it because he knew that God was the only God. He was not an idol God, not an idol God made of wood, stone, but he is the God who made heaven and earth. Nobody can defeat his purpose, can decrease his greatness, and can delete his resources. I need you to stand up in your living room, in your bedroom, or wherever you are, in prison, in a nursing home. I don't know where you're at, but wherever you are listening, streaming live, let me tell you that your enemies are going to fall. God will cause false accusers to fall. Young people, let me talk to you. Some of you are not in school, but a bully may be in your community. I come to tell you that your bullies are going to fall. Backbiters are going to fall. Ditch diggers in your life, haters who are drinking haterade, bigots, finger pointers, backstabbers, conspirators, and even racists. They're going to fall. God's word for us is don't be afraid of your enemy they're going to fall listen to what Psalm 27 verses 2 and 3 says when the wicked even my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat of my flesh they stumbled and fell let me say that again they stumbled I'm coming on in and fell Though an host should encamp against me, though a large army shall come up to try to destroy me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. Hezekiah just took his threats and laid them before the Lord. Then God sent another word to Hezekiah through his prophet Isaiah saying that the king of Assyria won't even get close to the city. He won't even be able to shoot any arrow nor raise any shield nor set up any siege mount against it. He won't be able to create a dirt pile, a fortification, and hide behind it. Listen to what verse 29 says. I will put my hook, meaning the ring, in your nose and my bridle in your lips. In other words, that's simply saying that God governs, that God guides. You know, in the Eastern time, they put a ring in the bull's nose and uh, they would take that bull if 
That bull was unruly and wild and fierce. And with that ring in that bull, a wild animal's life in his nose, they were able to pull that bull in whatever direction they wanted. And that's what God is saying to your enemies. I will put a hook, a ring in their nose and put a bridle in their mouth like a horse. Let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, I draw to my clothes that none of our enemies are beyond the restraining of our God. He said the way he came is the way he is going to return. For God is defending the city to save it for his own honor and for David's sake. While Hezekiah was trying, yes, to figure it out, God had already worked it out. And you know, if you would start believing, yes, this morning that God has already worked it out, I come to tell you that you would experience a miracle in your life and uh, believe that the need has already been met. Mm. The way is already made. The door of opportunity is already open and uh, the path is already paved. Mm. And uh, I want you to know, my brothers and my sisters, uh, yes, uh, oh, the bills, the bills uh, is already paid. Mm. And the deliverance is already here. Mm. The adversary can still be conquered when you believe. Uh, do y'all hear what I'm saying? Uh, let me tell you, my brothers uh, and my sisters, uh, all things, uh, do y'all hear me? Uh, oh, all things, uh, oh, all things are still possible if you only believe and uh, finally my third point is uh, the power mm, I told you about uh, the problem and then secondly I told you about the prayer mm, uh, but oh good God almighty uh, oh I can't leave you uh, oh oh without telling you about my God's power. Mm. According to the scripture, to Haka, mm. yes, uh, and his Ethiopian forces pushed the Assyrians back to the Assyrian camp. Yes, where the Assyrians were then mysteriously annihilated by the angel of the Lord. The record said an angel and messenger of God, 185,000 was killed and destroyed by God. Let me ask you a few questions before I leave you. Who can stay can against our God. Oh, who can fight against our God? 
Oh, 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 who can escape my God's judgment? Mm. Sennacherib, the Assyrian king, managed to escape to Nineveh, mm. but he was subsequently killed by his own son while he was worshiping his idol God. Do you hear me? Uh, you may get by. Oh, but you will not get away uh, when danger was all around, when all hope seemed lost, and when it appeared that there was no escape, God, God, oh, God had already worked it out for Hezekiah and what God did what God did for Hezekiah this morning God can do the same thing for us God will set the enemies to flight and make everything all right while you and I are trying to figure it out God do y'all know who God is? Oh, God has already worked it out. Uh, I remember in the old school church, God specializes. That's what they used to sing in things seemingly impossible. Uh, and he can do what no other power, Holy Ghost power can do. Uh, do you remember that song, that problem? that I had oh I just couldn't seem to solve I prayed and I prayed just got deeper involved good morning let me say this I turn it Mm. Oh, I turn it up. Oh, I turn it up. Oh, I turn it over to Jesus and I stop worrying about it. I turn it over. That's all I want to tell you. I turn it over. I turn it over to the Lord. And he worked it out. Oh, he's working it out for you. Oh, don't worry about that money problem. Don't worry about the doctor who diagnosed you with cancer or other diseases. Oh, don't worry about that rebellious child uh, God God told me to tell you God told me to tell you oh why you trying to figure it out I already I already I already oh worked it out for you God has past tense already worked it out don't try to stress yourself out don't do it because my brothers and sisters God has solved the problem every head bowed every eye closed God our Father we thank you for your omniscience thank you for your omnipotence that you're working things out in our behalf. And oh God, we must learn how to give you our troubles and our problems and not use our own wisdom, our own wherewithal, our own strength, education to try to figure things out with our finite, limited mind. Help us, God, to know by faith, trust, and hope that things have already been worked out for us. We give you the glory and praise and honor right now that you're working it out in those, in the lives of those who are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. Boy, let me tell you, when the prophet told Hezekiah, 
don't be afraid of your enemies because they shall fall. Let me tell you, even when my enemies and my foes come upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. Even if they tried to set a trap, even when they attempt to come upon you, God is going to cause them to fall. So don't be trying to figure things out. Stop using all that unnecessary brain power and just cast all your cares on the Lord because let me tell you, God has already worked it out. Because God specializes things that seemingly impossible. He can do the impossible and the incredible. You just believe and have faith. Oh, we welcome you to become a member of the Wings of Love Ministries. This is a church where there's no big eyes and no little use. Everybody in the Wings of Love Ministry is a VIP. What do you mean, Pastor? I'm simply saying to you, Father, to you, Mother, to you, Son and Daughter, if you decide to become a member of this church, you are a very important person. This is a family. This is the wings of love. And we try to express love in our life and in our living. And so if you want to become a member of the Wings of Love Ministries, the information is on the screen. You can become a member of the Wings of Love Ministries virtually until we come back into the physical facility. I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, that God has opened doors for you, made ways for you. God has supplied your needs even in the midst of this pandemic. So we're asking that you would share a gift, that you would give your tithe and your offering. I really appreciate it. I thank you, my brothers and sisters, for your gifts. We want you to know where your money is going here. We're doing some remodeling around uh, this church. Now it's time for communion to take the Lord's Supper. Jesus Christ left two ordinances with the church. Church means called out ones. One is baptism and the other is communion. And during this first Sunday, we want to take time out to partake of the Lord's body and his blood. His blood, he said, is drink indeed body is meat indeed. We take a retrospective look back over 2,000 years ago when he died on the cross. He shed his precious blood. There it got darker than a thousand midnights. He died. And then finally he gave up the ghost and said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Take a retrospective look. Then we can take an introspective look. Paul says, let a man examine himself. We need to uh, look within ourselves, soul search. If there's anything that's contrary to God's will and way, we need to ask him to forgive us. If we've uh, done anything to offend another, we need to go to that person, apologize. Even if they've passed on, we need to confess that right now. When we take an introspective look, calls us not to look at somebody else but to look at ourselves. Then we take a prospective look when Jesus shall come again in his majesty and power. When we will meet him in the air in that rapture. That's a prospective look because Jesus is coming again. So tonight I want you, or this morning rather, 
I want you to take your bread and your wine. Listen to what 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, beginning with the 23rd verse says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, this is Paul talking, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let's eat together. Then he said after the same manner, this is Paul talking. Also he took the cup. Paul talking about Jesus. When he had supped saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. And wherefore, whosoever drinketh shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. In other words, they were treating the Lord's supper like they were at a picnic. Paul wanted them to have reverence respect for the Lord's Supper. So let's drink together. I want you to have a good day today, but then next week, we want you to have a better next week because every day is a new beginning. Keep a smile on your face because God has smiled on you. God love you.